Well, hello, my lovelies, and welcome to this week's episode of Your Manchester. This is me, Miss Belinda Scandal, back from my little hiatus, joined this week by the very lovely Michael Adams. How are you, Michael Adams? I'm very good. How are you? I'm all right. This is weird. We can't actually turn our heads, because if we do, it goes totally offshore. <laughs> very clever like that, isn't it? I'm going to turn anyway to you. Ready? I'm going to turn. Marvellous. There you go. How are you, Flo? I'm very good. It's so nice to see you. I know. You. Hey, another accent. I seem to be infused with accents for my uh, for my associate presenters. You couldn't guess it originally, though, could you? Now, where are you from? I'm from County Durham. County Durham is mm. where? Um, in the northeast, near Newcastle. Near Newcastle. Oh, well, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, hello, Susan Irvine. How are you? And welcome. Uh, we've got a marvellous show lined up for you. We are talking Hale Barnes Carnival, and we are talking the wonderful, 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 wonderful lizard boy. We're going to be speaking to Justin in just a few seconds about that. In the meantime, though, how's your week been? It's been very good. It's yes. been very busy. Very a lot busy of work, a lot of radio, yes. but good You're fun. Here. I'm here now. And we must just say we are both looking at each other every so often because we might notice a bead of sweat. As I'm sure you'll appreciate around Manchester today, it's been very, very hot. But not hot enough for me not to wear my favourite Rita Fair club. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Uh, so it's all very exciting. It's it is. Nice. I'm always excited. Have we played... We played the uh, we played the um, Stranger Things yeah. intro that version, didn't we? Why? So there'll be a little bit more on that in my walks on later in the program. More on that to be revealed. But hopefully, have you been watching Stranger Things? I've never watched one. Oh dear. Is it is it good? Worthwhile? I watched it when I was about eighteen. So I haven't watched year. it since. All right. It's so the last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's worthwhile then, yeah? It, you know what? The original series was brilliant. Can't comment on the new one, but it's got a bit of Kate Bush in it. We Kate like a Bush. bit of Kate Bush. Oh, running up the hill. Running up that hill. Running up that yeah. hill. Marvellous. Uh, what else is in there? Then? Oh, they've got villains. Yes. They've got, they've got another villain. You ready for my little right. tenuous link here? They've got another villain that looks awfully like a lizard. And here to join us now to speak about Lizard Boy, uh, this fabulous musical I'm excited, is the one and only Justin. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. Hello, for Justin. Me. Thank you very much for being part of this. Now, how are you? I'm doing so well. We're in the middle of um, tech rehearsal, prepping for our first performance tomorrow night. It's exciting. First of all, tell us what Lizard Boy is. Lizard Boy is a comic book superhero origin story set in Seattle, told by a three person folk rock band. And it's about a guy named Trevor who is kind of ostracizing himself, keeping in because he has green lizard skin that he's ashamed of. But one um, meetup on Grinder kind of throws him into the adventure of a lifetime. And that's what you're going to see when you come see the show. Oh. Exciting times. And it's on at Hope Mill. Is this the first thing you've ever done at Hope Mill or have you been involved with them I, previous? This is my first time in the UK. I have never been here before. I am so happy that it's in Manchester. I'm so happy I'm at Hope Mill. This place is so amazing and the people are so kind and wonderful. And what I'm hearing is the audience is ready for this kind of show, which I'm excited about because I want to give it to them. And you've arrived at the perfect time because we are having the best weather that we've known for ages. So wonderful it's weather. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I'm loving it. Not that I suppose you've seen much of it, because I'm guessing you've been locked in rehearsals and tech rehearsals and everything. What do as we expect to see on stage from this show? What's that? What do we expect to see on stage? How is it going to yeah. be presented to us? You're going to see uh, some. You're going to see a lot of like theater magic. If you've been shut in, you know, from lockdown, not being able to see a lot of like theater. This is like the perfect kind of way to get back into it because the kind of magic that we're doing on stage with only three people, we're playing all of the instruments ourselves. We're making all the magic ourselves. It is kind of like a, a true sort of love letter to what makes theater so special and why it's something that needs to be shared in person with an audience right in front of us. And just touching, you've just mentioned obviously lockdown, the pandemic, something that none of us could avoid obviously over the last two years. Is this sort of your first piece of work back following that hiatus? A little bit. So we got to do Lizard Boy last fall in California, which was kind of, that was our first kind of way back um, since the pandemic. And it was so wonderful for it to be this show. So I'm really happy that hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping that that people are going to, to come to this as their first, their first experience um, in the pandemic. Well, I mean, Hope Mill Theatre, you don't get better shows mm. around the, the, well, the city, I'll say it, than what you get there. You get a raw, organic, realised, well, perfection of performance there. 
Yeah, I'm, yes. I mean, not to like, you know, build it up too much, but it will be perfection. <laughs> it's going to be great. It will be. So how many people are in this orchestra, as I'm going to call it, with you? Only three people. So we we tell it's it's um it, I play Trevor who is the main character who has been locked in for the entire year um so very relatable content um and then I have two other cohorts one plays my love interest um William A Williams plays my love interest and then my friend Kiki Delore plays the super villain of the comic book story and how did you get involved in doing this show here at Hope Mill then what brings you over to the UK to do this. We, it's been a dream ever since this premiered in, in, at Seattle Rep in 2015. Um, it's been a dream to, to come to um, Edinburgh Fringe um, and, and bring the show there. And, and we just found a really amazing opportunity and relationship with the lovely people at Hope Mill so that we could sort of like um, test the show here, make sure that, I mean, you know, for the Fringe, it has to be an hour long. So we have spent the last few weeks creating the hour long version of our normally one hour, 40 minute show. This is um, obviously like a, a huge part of our calendar in Manchester year after year, the Greater Manchester Fringe. Had you heard of it previously back in the States? The Manchester Fringe? Um, no, I hadn't, but, um, but yeah, I'm excited to, I'm sorry, I'm excited to be here. I just love Manchester so much. We're literally like, we're literally, they put us up in Gay Village, which is just a dream. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's not bad, that little street, is it? It does quite well yeah. for itself. It's, it's not nice. bad. It's nice. It does. Uh, now, this is with us from the 14th to the 27th of July. How are tickets selling? I, I'm guessing it's Hope Mill, so they're practically sold out. Oh, I mean, uh, try anyways. I know this weekend, I believe we have a, um, a, a discount code for folks who want to come in for um, 10 pounds, I think it's uh, the, the code is lizard10. Um, so go online and uh, use that code and come see us this weekend for our first weekend here. That was my nickname on Grind. <laughs> Strangely <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> nice that I've got my own voucher. Now, listen, thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> and uh, absolutely the best of British with it. Have fun with it, and we will be there to watch it. For now, though, thank you ever so much, Justin. Thank you. Thank you so Cheers, Justin. Thank you. All right, then, everybody. You're looking for a good pizza. I bet you're off to Nell's. your neurosculpting coach for another minute of mojo sometimes you have to take a look back in order to move forward if you are struggling or you're stuck with something that you want to achieve and you're starting to doubt yourself i want you to do this exercise look back on all the things that you have already accomplished what it is that you're absolutely proud of and also all the challenges that you faced along the way where you thought You'd never get through them, but you did. I promise you, when you do that exercise, you can use it as mojo juice to help keep moving you forward. I'll be back next time for another minute of mojo. In the meantime, you can connect with me on my Instagram page, joewritten.mojo. Uh, Joe Britton there telling us all about the mojo juice. Oh, love a bit of it. She is inspiring though. I could I could drink one of them messages every day. Oh yeah, she does. She keeps me ticking along. There's a few close ups tonight. That they <laughs> started. Um, it's nice. Listen, there's so much going on this this weekend alone sees the return of a very important festival called the Hale Barnes Festival. And we needed to know more about it because there's so much to know. Mm. We thought we had to bring in Max. Max, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for coming on, love. You look very relaxed and chilled. Whereabouts are you in Hale Barnes at the moment? I, I am at the moment, yeah. We're just getting ready to set up. Um, so it's a busy weekend we've got planned. And the weather's very is... posh around those ends, isn't it? Very posh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sweating. I've been out on the field today. Uh, oh, but you've got and... a field. You've got a field. We're looking to have a warm no, no. at the moment. It's quite <laughs> impressive. Is it your own field? 
I wish. I wish. <laughs> could you, no, could no. you imagine having your own field and knowing that the turning up at the weekend will be Russell Watson? I mean, yeah. Russell Watson's just one of the names that you've got appearing there. Who else have you got appearing there other than Russell? Yeah, yeah. So we've got three nights um, of entertainment. The Friday night is Russell Watson, so a big proms concert. Saturday, uh, we've gone for a big 70s night, so we have The Real Thing and Hot Chocolate. Uh, and then Sunday, we've got Rose Royce, uh, Gwen Dickey. So a really good mix there, um, especially in the sunshine, loads of hits, great food, drink. It's going to be a blast. Marvellous. Well, I think that sounds phenomenal. Don't Hot it? chocolate like everyone's a yeah, winner, babe. Everyone's a winner. Love a bit of that. Hey, and you sex a thing. Yeah. Yes, that was feeling not for me. <laughs> hey, amazing. I mean, well, what year, how many years has this been going for now? We're in our sixth year now. Um, so we like to do things differently. When we set it up, it's free entry in the day um, with fun fair, maker's market, um, loads of stuff going on, supercar displays. Um, but we thought, actually, we want to make it so... This, this sort of big acts coming to us so it becomes more more involved um so we've had everyone from boney m to martin kemp um five star we try and get a really good mix there and sort of you know have a proper really good go at it um so yeah i'm looking forward to this weekend so it's not just the big shows then you've got stuff on in the daytime as well perhaps emphasize more on what's on the daytimes yeah, yeah. So it's free entry, 12 till 4. Um, and it, it's just about coming together, everyone being able to get together. Um, obviously, the, the 18 months or whatever we had with COVID and stuff. Now coming out of that, we've got uh, live music, we've got dance displays, uh, food and drink, aerial shows, fun fair, Maker's Market. Um, There's a really, you know, you can come and have a full day out um, and then enjoy some great music uh, headliners in the night. Did you see he mentioned food there? Oh, yes. Food. What food have we got going on there, please? This is the decider of whether I turn up or not, by the way. Just so you know, it's all about the food. Yeah, food-wise, we, we try and get a great mix of what are the best in Manchester. So we've got wood fire pizza. We've got Greek oh, gallows. Uh, we've got Yorkshire pudding wraps, although it might be a bit hot for that, I don't know. Um, loads and loads of stuff. Crepes. We try and sort of pick great local artisan food and drink so that you know you can have a really nice time in the sun now this is taking part on st ambrose playing fields where, whereabouts it is, is that in hill bounds is that where so in relation it's, to it, food, it's yeah. just on hill road so if you've ever gone from the airport to altrincham you will have driven past it um it's uh, the postcode is wa150hf um I remember that now and uh, if you go to hailboundscarnival.co.uk you'll see all the data details directions um we've got parking on site so you don't need to worry about your car um it's all taken care of and through that web address is that how people get their hands on tickets because obviously after 4 p.m when that live music starts it's a ticketed event only is that how we get tickets through the website that's it yep so tickets are available on the website or they're available on the gates um if you if you come on the day now i was going to say if you turn up on the day and you decide you want to stay for the the evening entertainment can you purchase a ticket there and then yeah, yeah, we don't kick you out. We just you can just buy your ticket and uh, and stay on. Um, so yeah, and, and all of the money raised goes to community projects and charities. Um, so it's completely not for profit. This year we're supporting Brainwave Children's Charity, which is based in Warrington. Um, does some amazing work with uh, with disabled children. It sounds. I'm. I'm. I might go to that. You know. Oh yeah. If not just for the Yorkshire pudding wrap. Yorkshire pudding wrap and Russell Watson. I tell you, that's a night out. <laughs> what in more my could eyes. you want? Well, I know. That's a night out in my eyes. <laughs> yes, Russell Watson giving it all. He does. And he performed on the cobbles once at Christmas. We had a minute, Corey. Did you have a minute, Corey? Yeah. Was he good? I don't know. I was on my way back to Durham by then. <laughs> I had a little night out with him in um, Jamie McDonald's dressing room one day and anyway we won't go into that right. it sounds like it's going to be phenomenal uh that is from the 15th to the 17th of july tickets are available and it's free entry till 4 p.m so make sure you all check it out for now though max thank you so much for your time thank you max cheers max thank you. Thank you. how exciting i know there's a lot going on this weekend there is a lot, An awful going, on lot going on this weekend hey okay. what I'm enough i know that, i can tell it. we've been in the studio all day i'm, I'm i i wait i would you know, I would. I'd, I'd take it off if I didn't have more. <laughs> Should we have a look at everything that is going on in and around Greater Manchester? Oh, let's do. Hi, I'm Hayley, and welcome to the Police Museum. I'm here with the ladies at Monologue. <laughs> Hashtag don't cast 
cast her out. Yes. Because it's so important for actors to be seen over the age of 40, particularly women on our stage and on our screens and behind the camera as well. Susan, tell me all about this project. What, in, what inspires you? Well, we wanted to tell our stories. I mean, we wanted to tell stories of women above the age of 40. Yeah. Um, we've all got unique stories, we've all, we can connect with the, our audiences through them. So, yeah, and I think we did that tonight. You definitely did, and there was lots of emotion, there was comedy, it was so, one minute I was laughing my head off, and the next minute I was like crying. And I also had a popping pit during those I'm so oh, sorry, but it's my first evening out in like six weeks. And um, now, also, some of you wrote yours as well, didn't you? Yes. Um, you wrote yours, didn't you? This is Julie Roo. Hi. First, the Hale Barnes Carnival, which returns this Friday at the St Ambrose College playing fields. The event will feature over 280 local performers across two stages, a traditional fun fair, weekend market and much more. Well-known opera singer Russell Watson kicks off the carnival, followed up with performances by The Real Thing on Saturday, and Rolls Royce legend Gwen Dickey closing the show on the Sunday. Tickets start from £30. Next is your opportunity to lace up your skates and journey the upside down. Off the back of the finale of Netflix's hit sci-fi horror drama Stranger Things, the team over at Escape to Freight Island are letting the show's Hellfire Club take over their brand new roller rink in the venue's main hall. Boogie along to the soundtrack of the show and celebrate all things Stranger Things from the 15th to the 17th of July. Tickets start from £7. And if you love Stranger Things, you'll love our take on the show's title sequence. Don't forget to get in touch with us if you think there's something we should be covering. Just tweet us at your MCR. Well, you've educated me there. There is plenty going on, isn't there? There is. Right. There is, including that Stranger Things roller disco. How are you on your um, not on your ice skates? On your roller skates? I'm all right on roller skates, but not ice skates. I can do roller skates, but can not you? ice skates. Yeah. I went ice skating yeah. once, no, I and I thought I'd be like yeah. Torval and Dean, you know, the bolero, yeah. the headbanger thing. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. No. But never again. But I was good on a skateboard. Were you? Yeah, I used to lie in it. I never used to stand in it, just lie in it, push myself along. Like a little it. seal? Yeah, like a little seal. That was all I had to do. It was important. There's loads going on, though. There is. Do you have an a favourite that's going on? You know what? I'm all about, if I could roll a skate, I'd be right down to that uh, escape to Freight Island. My housemate's brilliant at it, yeah. but... <sighs> Not I'm surprised me. you've got any time built to be completely honest with you. I mean, I'm you're here every morning. I am. I am. 8 till 10 every single morning, Monday through to Thursday for Chatterbox Radio. Chatterbox Radio, everybody. It's what, what, going what? swimmingly well. If you've not watched, uh, listened to it, listened to it, yeah. Mm. All you need to do is download the app either on Android or, of course, on Apple App Store. Is that what yes. Call it? Yes, yeah. it's all going on there. But two lads that are on our programme have been very, very busy giving themselves challenges God only knows why, but I mean, they've, they've put themselves through the mill for this, as this week's Little Insert proves. Welcome everybody to the Greatest Hits Game Show. I'll be your host as we're once again joined by the amazing Jack Colpacker. 
Hello. And, you know, he's going to be pitted face to face with our lovely Frankie. I have no idea what's going on. I don't Frank. know what's no, going on. No, no, no one's got any ideas. Hell. But it's the battle of the radio presenter versus the vocal artist. And I've prepared several questions for the two of you to answer. We've got two from the 70s, two from the 80s, two from the 90s, and a variety of sudden death questions. In case none of you, in case you know, we're equaling the score out at the end. Because each question that's scored correctly, that's a point. If you don't score, if you don't get it correct, then you don't get any points. If both of you are at the same points at the end of the show, well, we're just going to keep moving. We've got more questions. You see, I'm prepared. Uh, I'm prepared for this. Um, We've only done two shows, by the way. We have. (laughs) But if no points are awarded, then each of you will have to face the punishment. And we're going to start. (laughs) We're going to start with the 70s. Okay. You're going to have 10 seconds from when I've asked the question to answer. Which hit song did the Village People release in 1978? You've got 10 seconds. What? Nine, eight. <laughs> N- 19 seven, what? 78, Frankie. 1978. Five seconds. Village people. I know the village people. I'm going to guess it. It's not them, but I'm just going to put one for the band. Okay. That's your time, Frankie. I'm going to let you go first. It's like I see Jack typing away. Uh, well, I took inspiration from Jack. Just the bands. Yeah. Just, just for the bands. Uh, that'll be never going to give you up. <laughs> okay, okay. Jack, what are you thinking? Living on a prayer. <laughs> okay. well, well I'm going to tell you. Yeah, yeah, it's just, you're both wrong. Living on a prayer, obviously, off on Jovi. Never going to give you up, obviously, Rick Astley. But it's the YMCA. Oh my it's God. It's the YMCA. Oh my God. Okay. I didn't know that was by then, though. I'm actually quite annoyed. I should have knew that. The village mm. people. Oh. I remember that. You might have yeah. holidays. I went to Haven where they were. Yeah. Went to Haven. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. See you. Okay, we're going to move to the second question of the 70s now. Which female singer left the American pop soul group, The Supremes, and went on to have a massively successful solo career? You've got 10 seconds from now. Hey. What was the group called? The, the Supremes. Jack might know it. He's, he's, I can I'm see it in his guessing. face. He's thinking. I'm guessing. I'm he's guessing. Guess. I don't know whether she was in the group, but there's only one I can think of. Mm. Okay, Frankie. Beyonce. I'm gonna guess it. I'm going with Whitney Houston. It was Diana Ross. Oh, oh no. okay. And we're gonna move into the eighties now. We're keeping it swift, keeping it going, Frankie. You're not doing very well, are you? No, we're both not doing well. You know, the video presenter versus yeah. the vocal artist. Get this knowledge going up, but. This one's a little bit easier. I mean, I thought it was. Because obviously, I've only chosen this question because I somewhat knew the answer. <laughs> so, what was the name of George Michael's debut solo studio album, which was released in 1987? I know, I'm going to kill me. Jesus, God. You've got 10 seconds, both of you. Think of his songs. Think of his songs. This was on last week's show of your Manchester. Think of I the songs. I can't remember what it was called. Think of the song. Think of the song from George Michael. Got five seconds. Oh, it's got the two. name of the song. <laughs> five, four, okay, three, go with that. two, one. Okay, Jack, <laughs> I'm gonna let you go first this time. <laughs> I have two. <laughs> um, I've got Faith or Careless Whisper. <laughs> now, it's, is it one of them? It's one of them. But which one is it? No, <laughs> oh, Careless Whisper. It's Faith. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh wait, I didn't I have an answer. Did you get a faith? No. No, I didn't have one. I was so close. No, it's, it was it was faith. So I'm gonna move on to the second question oh, of no. the 70s. At <laughs> the minute, it, at the minute, you're both gonna be facing the punishment. And you've got three more questions to get an answer right. This one. You should both be able to get it. So which group sang the song Take On Me in 1984? Oh, no. I know the song though. Frankie you might know it. <laughs> About 10 seconds. What year was this? 1984. I think we played it last show that we did. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is it? Uh huh. And check. Last one. <laughs> Frankie, that's a point to you. Oh, yes. oh Jack. I wasn't no. going to cheat. I wasn't going to cheat. You've but... got you've got two more questions okay. to go. It's, it's redemption still, is it's, still, redemption. it's still on for you. It's mm. still going. Okay, we are now in the 90s.
Portico Library and Newsroom is an absolute magical space. This, I'm in the heart of the reading room, where many years ago, the news used to come through from London on stagecoach, just out there. And uh, in here, they would break down the news to get it out there to the rest of Manchester, Greater Manchester, back in the 18th and 19th century. So, today what we have is an exhibition about Aboriginal art. Aboriginal art that was stolen from the children that created it um, and from the people of the Aboriginal people in Australia. And uh, it's come full circle, it's come back home. And this exhibition is going to be in the Portico Library and news, Newsroom on Mosley Street for a few days, um, I think a couple of weeks actually. Um, and I'm here to speak to a couple of people, have a look at some of the art. Some of the stuff that we're gonna look at is quite difficult reading um, because of the colonialism side of things. Um, some of the, the way the people were treated less than respectful you know how it has been and um, just basically take it in and just try and put myself in their shoes. Anyway, join me. Let's uh, let's go and see. Hey, I'm here with the lovely Helen Idol. Helen, welcome to Portico Library. You Australian yourself? I am, yes. I'm actually raised on Noongar Buja. Okay. But I'm a Wadjala, which is a white fella. Ah, <laughs> I think I got that, actually. <laughs> I don't know, something gave it away. Yeah, something gave it away. Anyway, why, why are you here? Why did you um, and the team bring the exhibition here? Just tell us briefly. Well, there's two reasons. One is that Florence Rutter showed the exhibition of children's art in Manchester in 1950. And the second reason is the portico is a place where you can think about difficult topics yeah. and their collection has got gaps and silences in it and the portico invites you to look into them and think about them. They have got a lot, the big collection of Australian um, books where they've told some of the story from one person's point of view, mm. so it's an opportunity to talk about things from the other person's point of view. I mean, personally for me, I think we have to tell the whole story, even if it's painful. Yes. Yeah, we can't leave any gaps out. And there are painful areas within this story, um, colonialism and so on and so forth. Um, how has it come through the other side, you'd say? Uh, what do you mean? As in, as in, you know, what, how's it been received? What have people said to you? Oh, well, people who've been here this evening, yes. because tonight's the first night that's it open, is. they've been very moved by it. I've met some people who've been to Western Australia, they're very excited to see it. I've had um, someone who's an art teacher based in London, normally, who said to me, uh, he wasn't, I think he was slightly unconvinced by them. And then when I said to him, but this is what Noongar Buja looks like. This is what the country looks like. He said, oh, I thought it was like a dream. I said, no, no, it really looks like this. When the sun's in that particular angle, when the trees are in silhouette, this is what it looks like. The children have done an amazing replica, you know, representation of their, of their country. Oh, and you've really described it with your words <laughs> and taken us, taken us back there. ...this evening, and it's an exploration of art from stolen generations, um, from the Aboriginal nation. Carolyn. And so it's a chance for me, because I didn't know this story, I thought it was a really moving story about um, these artworks that travel the world, um, but what actually happened to the children who created the art is really sad. And part of the project is to reunite those people with the artwork, which I think is really beautiful. Um, but it's a real opportunity for us to see artwork that is from a group of people that don't normally get represented when we're talking about Australian art, which is really sad. Um, but it's also an opportunity to really understand another culture and another part of the world and um, other effects of colonialism in that time that when the library was created mm. some of the things that were considered normal and we have now reassessed as a country and as a society um, to see what those impacts were but also to see that there are times when people who are really oppressed can still create something that's really quite beautiful and amazing to see. So well put. Really, really well put. That is so well put. And for you 
worked on to have yeah. something like this in your space? Let's just, how does that feel? Because it's lovely, isn't it? But also as well, it, this kind of stuff is quite uncomfortable reading. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what we, we, we specialise in uncomfortable reading here. Because I mean, as the librarian, I'm going to bring it back to the books. And I wouldn't say it's also, it's not really my space. I would say that it's every, it's the city space. So anyone can come and, and, and come and enjoy it and come and see the exhibition, come and see the books. But basically, our job is to try and connect the collection with what's going on out there in the exhibition space. And we have an incredible Voyages and Travels collection, which is both extraordinary and terrifying at the same time. And it connects beautifully with this exhibition about how those voices have been marginalised and been silenced. And part of our job now is to make sure that those voices are elevated so we can hear those different different stories about what happened in Australia. Um, and we've got a great collection to do that with. How fabulous is that? Hey, we've been to the police museum. We have. We've been to Portico. Hale Barnes. Hale Barnes. And we also saw the first instalment of the Frankie and Ollie quiz. I'm on the edge of my seat. I was. I was. I, I, was, too, I was gutted. I went, no, it's not finished. <laughs> it can't finish. And it's not. It's back with you the second yeah. part next week. Now, so far, Frankie and Ollie, no, Frankie and um, Young Do you know where you are, love? Jack are uh, tying, everybody, tying. tying. They're tying it off. Yeah. Very exciting. One all. One all. So we'll find out next week. What was the forfeit again? Bread soaked in soy That's sauce. That's not what I suggested. I originally said cinnamon. Cinnamon. Oh, you can't do that. It's bad for your breath. It's bad for you. No, we're not insured. Anyway, so, yes, next week um, they, we find out who is going to indulge in the slice of bread and soy sauce. You know what? I wouldn't um, mind that. Would you not? No. no. I don't mind a bit of soy sauce. I bet it's a bit vinegary. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like a bit World War II, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> bread and dripping, yeah. bread and dripping, I tell you. Right, okay then. So let's, um, have we seen what's on the box yet? Because I'm intrigued to know what's going on on the box. Let's have a look what's on the box. Hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to this week's On The Box. How's everyone doing? Now, obviously, if you're a football fan, you can watch the women's Euro and that's being covered by the BBC. If you're missing Doctor Who, do watch the series Class. It's currently available on iPlayer and it was made a few years ago for BBC Three. It's about a group of London teenagers who are trying to protect everybody from monsters and it's done by the Doctor Who team. Also, I've got the, com the series Vigil on my list. That is available on iPlayer and it stars Saran Jones. It's about the disappearance of a fishing trawler and the death of a nuclear submarine and that actually brings the police into conflict with the Navy and the security services. Like I say, that's available at the moment on iPlayer. Oh, and do watch God's Favourite Idiot. That's on Netflix. It's absolutely so funny. Honestly, it's hilarious. And it stars Melissa McCarthy, who's one of my absolute faves, and also her husband, Ben Falcon. And he's actually written it as well. Absolutely hilarious. It's about a man who glows and he becomes a messenger of God. It's pure comedy and they're all 20 minute episodes. Absolutely perfect just before bed as well. So that's it from me. I shall catch you next time. And remember, stronger together. Cheers. I'm just trying to figure out what she was that. Do you know what it reminded me of? What? Do you remember they used to they had them shopping bags that were made out of string? All oh, right, yes. I, I thought she was sat on one of them. It could have been. She's only small. She is. She's small. She fits on our bean bag, doesn't she? she Look at her enjoying that weather, though. I know. I know. Out in a garden, in a hammock. That's what we need in the studio. What, a garden or a hammock? <laughs> Both, I think, because, of course, we are set to reach all-time highs. Let's head over to Paul with the weather for us. <laughs> Hello my lovely weather watchers and welcome to this week's weather forecast with me Paul Rudd and I'm here in my garden enjoying the sunshine, lots of warm weather on the way, turning warmer and hotter near the weekend. <laughs> Love it or loathe it, it's certainly getting hot. We've had our hottest day on Monday, which was 29 degrees Celsius. Ouch! Well, let's see what this week's weather brings. Hot, hot, hot. 
just how I like it, and that's how I like me men. Just wish I could get one. Here's this week's weather details for Manchester. OK, Thursday is looking sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 20 degrees Celsius. Friday is looking sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 22 degrees Celsius. And it's looking mighty fine for this weekend's weather as well. Saturday is looking sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius. And Sunday is looking sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius. Get the sun cream ready. <laughs> So enjoy the nice sunny weather while you can, but do please stay safe, wear your sun cream, have lots of water and don't forget your hat. And also the pollen levels will be high at the weekend, so just be careful with your hay fever. Time to go back to the studio right now for this week's amazing episode of Your Manchester! Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, it's warm in here. Isn't it? it is, isn't it? <laughs> very, very warm. I'm here keeping it nice and professional. I'll see the two cameras. Where's my other one? There. There we go. Lovely. All right, then. Well, that is it. We're out of time now, everyone. Uh, make That's sure not flown. You... Didn't that fly? Oh, flies, doesn't it? Time flies when you're having fun. Done set. So I'll wait for it to fly by. In the meantime, thanks, everybody, for watching this. I don't know why I looked up there, then. Just checking the clock. I've got to be home. I've got to be home. I've got to cook some duck. Oh. Cooking tonight. I've signed up with my little friend. I know. I've got you on it, haven't I? have got me on Hello yeah. Fresh. And I've been cooking like, from scratch every single day of the week, apart from Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and Monday. But other than that, I'm on it. I'm on it like a cab on it. Uh, listen, make sure you check out our radio station, Chatterbox Radio. It's live from 8 a.m. <laughs> in the morning with me. Uh, right through till um, 9 p.m in the evening with with everybody so make sure you're checking it out in the meantime are you ready for this you've not done this before it's my first one are you ready you're ready okay uh who've we got next week i'm just trying to brandon's back next week everybody in the meantime thanks for watching this week's episode of your manchester, manchester.